I'm from Iceland, so I might sound a bit stiff since English is not my mother's language and this is also my first video voiceover, so I apologize if I sound broken. Today I'd like to feature a desktop synth module I built, which I'm calling the Anatomic Instruments 51D. Anatomic Instruments being my creations and 51D being the hexadecimal designation that this particular synth gets. Some of you know it as the MIDI box synth. If you don't care about all the technical details and just want to hear the noise it makes, just skip to the next video. 15 rotary encoders, 34 push buttons, 102 LEDs and a lot of ribbon cables. In Synth Talk, it's a digital slash analog hybrid multi oscillator desktop module based around the SID chip from a Commodore 64 computer which can be used as a monophonic synthesizer, polyphonic synthesizer or a drum module. It has a powerful arpeggiator, simple pattern sequencer, complex modulation matrix and a lot more thanks to the MIOS operating system which has been in development for many many years. In electrical engineer talk, it's a big old PIC microcontroller which takes input from MIDI along with user input from the front panel, processes it and translates into language which the old SID chips understand. I say it's a multi oscillator module because it can house just one SID chip all the way up to 8 SID chips and each SID chip has 3 oscillators. Every pair of SID chips needs one microcontroller and you can build a multi timbral synth if you use more than one microcontroller. So if you were to build a 24 voice poly synth you would need 8 SID chips and 4 microcontrollers. And when I say polysynth, I mean sort of a paraphonic slash polyphonic mix, as each SID chip has three oscillators and three VCAs, but just one filter. But before we go any deeper, I should talk about where this all comes from. The MIDI box platform is the brainchild of Thorsten Klosse from Germany, which he describes as non-commercial DIY projects for MIDI hardware geeks. Just before the millennium he started writing code for PIC microcontrollers to be able to process MIDI information and out of that MIOS was born. MIOS stands for MIDI Box Operating System and users can write apps for it based on tutorials and examples which Thorsten provides on his website ucapps.de. He has been writing code for and maintaining the platform the whole time and the most recent projects use 32-bit ARM processors. But the MIDI box SID uses an old 8-bit PIC because he started making it in 2002 and pretty much maxed out the SID chip back in 2008. That doesn't mean he stopped updating the app though. The most recent MIDI box SID was released in December 2014 which means the code has been maturing for 12 years now. No commercial SID chip host can ever hope to come close to this. It's just too bad they stopped manufacturing the SID chip back in 1993. I'm not going into details about the SID chip itself other than saying it's the quintessential 8-bit sound generator. It's like the angrier older brother of the Nintendo Game Boy. For more information I'll put some links in the video description. I'll also put links to the build thread when I get around to finishing it. I built a single pick dual set full front panel setup in an original Commodore 64 case which also uses the original Commodore 64 power supply. It can either be used as a stereo mono synth or a mono 6 voice polysynth with 3 oscillators per output. On the front panel we have the oscillator section, filter section, envelope section, modulation matrix section, LFO section, navigation and the four line display. On the back and sides we have MIDI out, MIDI in, audio output of each of the SID chips, audio input to each of the SID chips, feedback control to overdrive the filter, power supply input and power switch. On the inside we have lots of small PCBs. Starting from the right, we have the PSU input and memory PCB, where the 5 volts are filtered, 12 volts for the SIDs are generated, and settings and presets are stored. 
It has four memory chips which can store 127 ensembles and 384 presets. Next we have the microcontroller PCB, that's where all the hard work is performed, user input is received and made into something usable. It hosts the PIC18F4685. Next we have the SID PCBs, that's where all the magic happens. Audio is generated from the microcontroller information. Above those we have two digital output PCBs which drive all the LEDs. Next to those we have two digital input PCBs which read input from the rotary encoders and push buttons. Above those we have all the ribbon cables running between the front panel PCBs and the digital input slash output PCBs. The cans right next to the SID PCBs are isolation transformers I put to minimize the chance of ground loops. They are rather expensive but since I can get them for a good price through my workplace and as I was having ground loop problems I decided to install them. If you are planning to do the same, don't make the same mistake as I did. I put the feedback potentiometer after the isolation transformers which kind of defeats it because of a tiny bit of character change in the transformers. 